Well, we have all of our speakers. They are officially unmuted, and we are ready to start our Uncovering the Secrets to Your Health Plan September Advocate webinar. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us today. We're really excited to use this webinar as a kickoff opportunity to talk through with you some tips and tricks for open enrollment and feature some of the tools and resources that the Arthritis Foundation has to offer not only to you, but to your community as well. So as we go through this uh, presentation, we want to really empower you to not only look at these tools and think about how they can impact your own life, but to spread the word and help be that advocate for your friends and family as they go through this open enrollment season. Um, so just some housekeeping notes to get started. If you have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to put them into the chat feature or into the Q&A, and we can address them at the end of the webinar. If you feel more comfortable asking your questions live, we can unmute your line at the very end of this presentation, and we can go through those questions then. Um, but to kick us off, the best thing that we can do is really feature our amazing guest speaker today. So we're going to have Heidi Barrett, an amazing Platinum Ambassador from Washington, share her arthritis story and her experience and her family's experience uh, navigating some of the administrative challenges of, of health insurance and how she's taken a part in helping to develop some of the tools that we're going to talk about today. Then Nick Turkis is going to talk through our Prescription for Access project and give you all a makeshift tour of our Your Coverage, Your Care toolkit, which has lots and lots of great resources for you uh, to make sure that you maximize your health coverage. Uh, and we're going to close today's webinar with uh, Vincent Facilio, who's going to talk through our open enrollment deadlines and give you some tips and tricks for navigating this uh, enrollment season. So to kick us off, we're going to welcome Heidi Barrett to share her story um, and talk to you all about everything that she has learned from her experience as a patient and her expert as a champion in our Arthritis Foundation volunteer network. Thanks, Julie. Um, so as Julie said, I'm Heidi Barrett. I live with my family in Everett, Washington, which is just north of Seattle, Washington. Um, my husband, John, and I, we have five kids ages 28 to 11, and one granddaughter. Our youngest four children have um, juvenile arthritis, and I also have the same disease. Um, when my daughter was born about 11 years ago, things started getting really bad in our family. At that time, we only had one child with juvenile arthritis, and we thought we were overwhelmed. He started getting sicker. And I started feeling like I had no control in our life. Um, it was a really dark period. And the way that I got out of that dark period of losing control of my family was I started volunteering with the Arthritis Foundation. Um, right now, I serve in many capacities. I started small, um, just helping out like, at our local camp. I eventually became an ambassador, which I absolutely love. I'm a platinum ambassador, so every year um, my family and I, we go to Washington, D.C. to speak to our elected officials. Um, I get to learn so much through the Arthritis Foundation at Summit. Um, there's always somebody speaking at Summit or at the Juvenile Arthritis Conference that has some little tip that helps me with our insurance woes. Our family uses anywhere between 500000 and a million and a half a year in insurance. There's four of us. Well, there was four of us on Remicade. Our biologics are being switched right now. Um, I spend about 40 hours a month I spend one week a month doing our insurance problems. I don't do more than that because if I do, it would become a full-time job. I've had to become an expert um, at our insurance. I've had to learn how what coding errors are. Um, I've learned to work my way up the food chain, as I call it, to meet people, um, to talk to people who can actually help us so that um, we get our correct medication and get the correct care that we needed. Um, 
Through this, I've been able to share our story. I've gone several times to Olympia, our state capital, and have testified on various laws to change to make life easier um, for people who have chronic diseases. Um, that is about it. Uh, you know, the thing that keeps my family going is um, we try to stay positive and look at the the good side of everything. When the kids were little and things seemed, we used to have to go to Children's Hospital four days a week. We were spending anywhere between 50, 60 hours a week at the hospital. I would make the kids name the good things that arthritis uh, brought us. And you're thinking, what good things have, could possibly could arthritis bring you? We had a whole list. One time, the kids got up to over 100 items. Um, keeping positive helped me not go back to that dark space that I used to be in. So that's about everything about my family. Um, Hi, Lee, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that story, and especially just hearing about some of those administrative barriers that you face in caring for or managing the care for your family and navigating health insurance. Um, that is just an unbelievable burden, and we want to make sure that for your family and for the families like yours, we offer tools like the Prescription for Access Project to help combat those things and make it a little bit easier. And so thank you for being a leader in our community and, and offering your expertise and mentorship to so many other families. Um, and especially, thank you for sharing your story with us so that we could drive a lot of the tools and resources created through the Prescription for Access Project. Um, so we're really thankful to have you here uh, on today's call, and we appreciate your sharing your story. And I think it's a really great segue into our next section of the webinar, where we're going to talk with Nick Turkis about the Your Coverage, Your Care Toolkit and the amazing resources that are included in it. Thank you, Julie, and thank you, Heidi. Uh, unfortunately, Heidi's experience with uh, insurance is uh, not unique, and that's one of the reasons that we've updated the um, Your Coverage, Your Care Toolkit. All of the information that I'll share with you today uh, can most easily be found at arthritis.org slash toolkits. At arthritis.org slash toolkits, you'll see a picture of the Rx for Access or Your Coverage and Care uh, Toolkit. Click on that, and that's the fastest and easiest way to get to this information. Next slide. Um, the arthritis, um, um, sorry, go back. <laughs> The Arthritis Foundation has updated and reorganized our Rx for Access Toolkit. The improvements include eight new articles and a completely revamped Paying for Care module. The resource is designed to help people with arthritis get the best and most of their health care options and coverage. The kit has four main sections, and I'll walk through each one. Understanding your health coverage, choosing the right coverage, managing claims, denials, and appeals, and paying for care. Let's start with understanding health coverage. For many health, insur uh, for many health insurance jargon is like a second language. Most people know what a premium is, but when it, uh, but when it comes to insurance, because, uh, because they have to pay it every month. But a recent study by Policy Genius asked more than 2,000 Americans to define four other key health insurance types, deductible, coinsurance, copay, and out-of-pocket maximum. And only 4% of those surveyed understood all four terms. So by understanding the key terms and how insurance works, you're in a much better position to spend less and get more. This module can help you with all of those tools, and they do include all of those terms. Next slide. You have important rights to protect your access to health care, but all health plans are not created equal and navigating open enrollment can be a challenge. Understanding the health services you need and what your plan covers will help you avoid and minimize claim denials. If needed, you can confer with experts 
like the SHIP programs, uh, that's the State Health Insurance Assistance Programs, then review sample explanations of benefits. Hey, Nick, um, I think yep. we're having trouble with the audio connection. We, we lost you there for a second. Would you mind oh, repeating? Oh, you? Awesome. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, managing health claims, denials, and appeals. Here's where things can get messy. Have you struggled to understand the countless roadblocks to accessing paying for care? Do you have paper cuts from all the mail uh, your provider's insurance send with explanations of benefits, covered and uncovered services? Uh, managing the claims process will help you minimize claim denials. If, you, if an appeal is necessary, uh, you'll need to know the common appeal terms, understand why your claim was denied, and follow the steps for a different appeal processes. And this module has lots of information about understanding why those uh, denials occur and how to remedy those situations. Next. Paying for care. Uh, these resources and contact information will help you be proactive about managing costs and find financial assistance for medical care. It all starts with understanding your care needs, using available financial tools like HRAs, HRSA, HSAs, and medical tax deductions. And I've marked um, the slide with two arrows. Um, the consumer assistance programs and financial assistance programs, and these links take you to uh, a list of industry uh, sponsored and charity care programs. And you'll also learn about the Arthritis Foundation's advocacy efforts uh, for insurance and medication coverage reform. Next. Are you con Confused, overwhelmed? Well, the helpline provides expert advice and navigation services. The helpline um, is managed by licensed clinical social workers that can help you um, use this toolkit, understand uh, the coverage that you need and deserve, and you can work with those social workers to um, help you navigate that process. Um, it's especially uh, useful for people that experience economic hardship that's affecting a person's ability to access care. Uh, they can I'll help you find a phys physician um, and even share resources about paying for treatment and care. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick, for going through those tools and resources. And they are abundant. There are so many different components mm -hmm. to those um, in the Your Coverage, Your Care Toolkit. So we really encourage everybody who's on this briefing today to go through them and look at what ones might be helpful for you, what ones might be helpful for your communities, and really share them broadly because they can be a real asset to all of us um, as we navigate open enrollment season. Hey, Julie. Thanks for passing the mic over. Um, this is Vince Basile. I'm the Director of Federal Affairs here at the Arthritis Foundation based in Washington, D.C., and I wanted to just mention um, the open enrollment periods that we have um, coming up this fall for Medicare, the individual market exchange plans, and for employer-sponsored plans. So beginning with Medicare first, um, the usual open enrollment period um, has not changed from last year. It's again going to be starting on October 15th and will run until the first week of December, December 7th. Um, and here is uh, the opportunity you're making to select plans uh, in Medicare, um, especially if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, which is the private insurance alternative to traditional Medicare, um, that this will be the deadline that you have there. And we're also going to be posting at some point in the next month um, on our website a toolkit to help you navigate uh, prescription drug plans. So that's Medicare Part D, um, for those of you that are familiar with that, D as in dog. Um, so that's an open enrollment period that is over the same period of time as well. So um, that's Medicare. Um, the individual marketplace, um, which are the exchange plans that are run by the federal government or the your state government. Um, is going to run from November 1st to December 15th, and uh, it's a lasting a period of less than, than two months, and that's a change from prior open enrollment periods where you had until the end of the year uh, to make to make a decision. So um, it's just important now to, to be thinking more clearly about that. If you have an individual market plan that you get through healthcare.gov to um, start thinking about your healthcare needs now because the, the plan is, or excuse me, the, uh, the enrollment period is a little bit shorter and so um, that requires a, a little bit more preparedness for um, enrollees and, and folks like you. 
Uh, and then the, the last open enrollment period um, that we always like to mention when we're having these conversations around this time of year is employer-sponsored plans. Um, since those are a little bit unique and different um, across the board, um, those deadlines are rolling. And so what we encourage you to do is speak with your human resources department and find out when the open enrollment period might be. Could be at the end of this year, could be right now, could be in the springtime. And so it's just a, a good idea to find out when that is. You can always be prepared and, and start thinking ahead about your healthcare needs over the next year. And uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Julie, who can talk a little bit about what we have coming down the pike and uh, our next webinar opportunity. Awesome. Thank you, Vincent. And one, a couple other things around the open enrollment period. Just one is that individual states have different open enrollment periods based on their own insurance departments. And so we really want to encourage you to, especially for our individual marketplace, go on to your uh, Department of Insurance webpage and look at the specific individual marketplace deadline that you'll be uh, looking at in your state because it may differ slightly based on the area that you live. So go and check that out. Uh, and we'll be providing more uh, information about that in our next briefing or our next webinar, which will take place in October. Uh, so the more we know now, the more we can prepare. Uh, and a lot of the tools that are in this Your Coverage, Your Care Toolkit don't only help during open enrollment season. And it's really important to take a look at them and think about how you can manage your care throughout the year so that when we come to these moments, we really understand what the cost of our care might be and how we can navigate that in the future. Um, the two other plugs that I want to make before we move on to the next slide, the first is that if you're a subscriber to the Arthritis Today, we have a really exciting article out in the publication this month that covers all of these jargon terms that Nick mentioned before and some of the things that you'll need to know entering into open enrollment season. So it's a really good reason to subscribe to Arthritis Today. Um, and if you're not a member, we are hoping to put, push that out live um, online later this week. So we'll circulate that in our next newsletter to all of you. And the other thing is that maybe if reading is not your primary uh, way to consume information and you really want to look at a video to help understand some of the tools in Prescription for Access, Vincent put together a really, really awesome video in five minutes or less covering 10 tips that you'll need to understand and manage your care costs. Um, so we encourage you to check that out. It was in our last advocacy and action newsletter. Um, and so we're going to keep on uh, beating the drum and really encouraging you all to become aware of these open enrollment deadlines, aware of the tools that are at your fingertips with the Arthritis Foundation, uh, and making sure to make them available to you in the best way that we can. So. Uh, we can be your trusted resource as we move through this fall uh, and going through all of these different deadlines. So at that, this point, we want to open it up for questions from you. Please feel free to type them into your Q&A or into your chat feature. And you can ask questions of our speakers, of um, our resources, and we're happy to answer any of them. Uh, if you'd like to ask your question live, please feel free to hit pound six to unmute your line. So we'll take a quick pause break and wait to collect any questions. Okay, so we only have one question that's coming in, and it's actually for Nick. So, Nick, if you're still on the line, uh, would you mind sharing Hi. with everybody? I'm awesome. Would you mind sharing with folks here what your favorite resource in the Prescription for Access Toolkit is? Oh, good question. Oh, my favorite. Uh, I would say that definitely in the paying for care section, is a section that we spent the most time um, pulling together resources. I think for many folks um, that, that have that even with insurance coverage, they can they can really struggle to pay for care. And so understanding um, what options that you have, everything from um, copay cards to um, uh, Medicare um, uh, ways to um, reduce your Medicare costs. It's it's all there. So um, I would I would definitely say that that's probably my my favorite section uh, section. Um, but not to count probably 
also selecting your coverage, you know, you're going to put yourself in a much better position. I can't tell you, um, I manage the helpline, and the number of callers um, every year that call and say they're on Medicare, they've just been prescribed an expensive medication, and they can't access a copay card. Um, and the costs are going to be, um, they can't afford the medicine. And um, many times the best option is to wait until open enrollment and, and select a plan that can cover um, that medication. And uh, so use, use this opportunity. If you think you're going to be on an expensive drug, if you currently are on an expensive drug, um, or you anticipate a procedure like a total knee replacement or hip replacement, things like that, Build that into your um, thinking and into your budget um, for um, uh, this period of time, and you can save yourself a lot of money going forward. Thanks, Nick. Uh, another question coming in for you is, um, if, you're, if I'm not comfortable calling in and asking my question of a helpline staff live, is there another option for me? Absolutely. You can email at helpline at arthritis.org. The email is helpline at arthritis.org, or you can go to a web form at arthritis.org slash helpline. That's arthritis.org slash helpline. Uh, so those are two, uh, that's, those are the options that you can, you can call in or you can email a question. And our calls um, are returned within 24 hours. Um, if you don't reach a person um, right away and your email should be returned within 24 hours as well. Fabulous, thank you. And one other question that's come in is specific to arthritis support network meetings and wondering how they could use some of these videos and resources during the meetings. And so our video uh, that we mentioned before, that 10 tips for managing your care, um, that's available on YouTube, and we're happy to make that internally available to staff and externally available to all our volunteers through our newsletters and just uh, online broadly. Uh, as with as will be all of our resources as we move through our open enrollment uh, marketing season. Um, and it looks like that is going to cover all of our, our questions about today. So we want to say thank you, especially to Nick, for fielding some of those. And before we let you go, we want to mention just a few other institutional updates for you. Uh, Heidi did a really great job of mentioning the Advocacy Summit and annual opportunities to come to Washington, D.C. And so we want to promote our Live Yes Advocacy Summit, which will take place on March 11th and 12th this year at the Renaissance Capital View Arlington Hotel. And this event is a powerful two-day event that allows our participants the opportunity to learn from each other, as Heidi mentioned before, from some of our experts in the advocacy space about how to share your story and make an impact on legislation and how to carry that with you throughout the rest of the year. Uh, so day one will be all kinds of learning in this way, and then day two, we'll take that learning and we'll put it into practice. We'll have meetings on Capitol Hill with members of Congress and their staff, and we'll share with them our stories in support of specific policy asks that truly can make a difference for people with arthritis. So we hope that you'll save the date Keep an eye out for travel award applications, which will come out later this fall, uh, and really uh, plan to be with us this March because it's going to be an impactful and fun event for all. Uh, the other institutional update that we have is just a save the date. October 17th at 11 a.m. will be our next open enrollment webinar, and we're going to be rocking and enrolling with our helpline staff and some other really cool guest speakers to talk you through some of the ins and outs that you'll need to know to really master your open enrollment uh, this year. So we're excited to, to feature this webinar. We'll be notifying you all about it, and we'll be providing a recording of this webinar very shortly um, in our next Advocacy and Action newsletter. So keep an eye on your inbox, and we'll uh, have lots to offer you this fall. Uh, with that, I'm going to say if you have any further questions or you'd like any questions answered that you weren't able to ask live today, please feel free to shoot my, me an email, and I can help direct them. Uh, give me a call or send me a tweet. Uh, I'm, we're always here to be a resource to you and help you navigate uh, all of your, your care challenges. So a special thank you to Heidi Barrett for sharing her story with us. 
uh, to Nick for walking us through our Prescription for Access Toolkit, and to Vincent for talking us through our open enrollment deadline. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And with that, have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks so much.